Okay, so we're going to take a step back and address something that we haven't looked at already. Um, and this is in terms of security um, with the website. Now, uh, we've just created our profile page. So if I click on that here, you can see that uh, this is my first name, which is the value that I store. First of all, when I register uh, and something I can update later on here if I like, uh, as well as things like my last name and email address and any other fields that you're adding here. Uh, now these are stored in the database uh, like so uh, and we're going to look at an issue um, that's uh, a an extremely common uh, problem uh, with websites that allow you the, as the user to enter any data uh, that's stored and then output at a later stage. So for example uh, any social networking website where you can enter a bio, uh, your details, your interests, anything that's uh, stored and then output to any, for anyone to see basically uh, pu that's public publicly accessible um, so I'm gonna um, f uh, sort of expose a security issue that we currently have here and then we're gonna go ahead and fix this uh, and see how we change this so I'm gonna go over to settings and I'm gonna uh, modify my first name now Obviously, you'd expect your your um, your users to say, well, you know, my first name is Alex, so I'm going to type Alex. However, um, the key here is never to trust input. And the reason being is we could do something like, um, oh, you can see I've got it up here uh, from where I've been testing. Uh, now, this is an old HTML attribute, BG color, uh, and that allows you to um, set background color on a page. Or, for example, I could say, strong and then Alex like this now obviously these are um, uh, HTML elements uh, and strong is just a way to emphasize text and you know most browsers will render this bold um, however this isn't really a valid first name we don't want to allow users to do things like this and when I click update here uh, you can see that my name here and if I go to my profile this is now bold uh, again, I could do something like um, underlined, for example, which is um, obviously not semantically correct, but however, um, you know, this is now underlined. Now, this is a problem because we don't want users to be able to do this. Now, this isn't really a security issue. It's more of a, um, a display problem. However, you also um, have, well, your users also have the ability to use scripting. So, for example, I could say alert here, and then I could say hello. Now, when I click update, um, this hasn't done anything. Well, it hasn't done anything yet there, but when I refresh now, uh, you can see that we have this script execution, and you know this is a security problem for a variety of reasons, redirects, things like that. Now, we need to protect against this. So, um, after this long explanation, we have a very, very short solution to this. Now, I've got registered up PHP open here. Uh, simply for the fact that, oh no, I need to go ahead and open um, the function that registers our user. Um, let's scroll down and find this, so register user. Now we've got this array walk, and that's calling this array sanitize function in general.php. Um, so for every item, i.e. first name, last name, email, blah, 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 we perform this function here, or call this function mysql real escape string. Now that... Uh, it helps to protect against SQL injection, but what we're not doing is sanitizing any uh, HTML um, input we find or any HTML uh, elements we find. Now, what we can actually do is we can use a function to convert these um, this this data or these this text uh, into HTML entities. Now, HTML entities are representation of uh, things like a, a less than or greater than sign, but that are rendered to the browser. Uh, and aren't shown as um, you know actual uh, symbols for example well you'll see in a moment so if I say, uh, say use HTML entities around here um, and also around this uh, single sanitize function which we we use for things like user input um, logging in um, anything really uh, that we need to singly uh, just sanitize a piece of data. It's important we do this here as well if we use this in the future for anything that requires input. Uh, let's go ahead and just refresh here. We get the same problem up here, but I'm going to go ahead and just modify this back to Alex. Um, and there we go, we're, ba we're back at the start. So we can now look at the new effect that this uh, HTML entities function has had. My first name here is Alex, that's fine. Now let's go ahead 
and uh, actually in fact let's go ahead and get rid of this quickly and we'll just show how it was stored in the database previously because this will this will basically just you know give you the clue so I use my script tags here to produce this output here click on here and you see we've got this um, here that's what you'd expect you've got a uh, a less than sign here, greater than signs to n, forward slashes, etc, etc. Now let's go ahead and just um, just redo what we've just done, or undone. So that's to use the HTML entities function and sanitize our data this way as well. Uh, let me go ahead and change my name back to Alex. Update. The database is updated to reflect that. Now let me go ahead and do the same thing again. Uh, let's just do the yeah. Let's do the script tags. That's uh, more of a danger. Now you'll notice first of all this is now actually being displayed on the page rather than um, being executed. When I click back on settings, you can see that we've got this instead now. Um, when I click on users, now you can see that we have the HTML entity which starts with an ampersand and then LT stands for less than colon that's an HTML entity that's then rendered on the page so for example if we view the source of this web page we can see that this now does not actually execute this alert here because this is just seen as output it's not seen as the start of a script tag so that's you know a really important thing to bear in mind when you're actually accepting user data. Uh, the same if we were to use strong and I clicked update uh, we just get our strong tag start and end. So you may not want to allow your users to enter any um, tags whatsoever um, and there are additional ways that we can you know protect against this as well. Um, we have functions like uh, strip tags and that's just strip underscore tags so we'll do the same for this one as well, strip underscore tags. And let's go ahead and check this out. So um, let's go and edit my settings again. I'll just click update. Um, hold on. Okay, so let's change this back to Alex. And let's go ahead now and use strong like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this out in the database. Um, you can see now that we have escaped the. Um, oh, we've done exact. Uh, we've done exactly the same thing, haven't I? Oh no, of course. Sorry, sorry. Um, the, the reason that this hasn't worked is we've converted to an HTML entity, of course, and then that's then not seen as a tag. So by stripping tags of things that aren't tags, we obviously don't get the desired output. So thinking about this logically, we would go ahead and we would use strip tags here, which would strip the tags and then perform, and then we'd have any uh, HTML entities converted again. So um, let's go ahead and check this out. So let's change this back to Alex quickly. And let's go ahead and then change this to, we'll do strong Alex. Day. There we go. We've updated, but nothing's happened. We remain at Alex, and that's because the strip tags function has changed these tag or removed these tags essentially. Uh, so even when I type strong and then update um, in the database, this just remains as Alex because the tags from either side have been stripped as well. Um, so this this strips HTML and PHP tags. So um, you know PHP tags aren't as much as an, uh, of an issue. Um, in this case, but it certainly strips HTML tags. So that's some visibility security where we are sanitizing user data that's actually output onto the page. Um, we've modified the two functions, array sanitize and sanitize. Um, array sanitize is obviously sanitizing things like our update um, field as we're going, uh, update information as we're looping through uh, and updating this data. And sanitize is just a single, but these uh, functions, um, go ahead, you know, have a look at them in the PHP manual uh, and sort of read up about them. There'll be some examples there as well. But it's extremely important that we do consider uh, any data that is allowed to be entered by a user and then output again.